Trek scooters have gained immense popularity in recent years as a fun, engaging, and challenging sport. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. However, it's important to ensure safety and performance of your scooter at all times. Ooh. One of the critical components in achieving this is the scooter clamp. Scooter clamps are such an important component that keeps the scooter handlebars attached to the rest of the whip. And hence, it is crucial to invest in a quality clamp, not this, that can withstand the stress and strain of the tricks you're learning. If you yourself are having problems with your scooter clamp, you are in the right place. It's time for yet another Scoot Review. But behind closed doors, I'm a fool for your love. My previous video on scooter clamps dates way back to 2016. The review was mid at best and certainly needs updating. Plus, I mean, we only really talked about SCS clamps, but there are many different clamp systems we need to consider. HIC, IHC, TCS, ICS, Pytel. We're gonna get into all of it, but let's start at the beginning. What is SCS? It's a standard compression system. Arguably, it's the strongest by far, usually heavier than others, but it's the most universal option, meaning they actually fit way more parts. And that's pretty epic. <laughs> ICS compression was seen for about a year as a decent compression system. Being the only alternative available at that time, people were somewhat forced into this system. A short while later, Rad Scooter Co. created the first HIC, or Hidden Internal Compression System which was a big improvement on the ICS model. It simplified and streamlined the pieces of the compression system and made it a very easy to use kit. That rider own piece of tech was then reimagined by the conglomerate Envy, who turned it into internal hidden compression, simply flipping the letters back and forth, making it smaller and lighter. This particular system nowadays creates a lot of confusion for shoppers, especially ones who don't really know what they're looking for. The majority of shoppers are unaware parents who don't know the difference between the systems and they would look at this TCS thinking it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same as HIC, only it's T toolless. And this Pytel compression, while it was not adapted by anyone really, at least they were going for something original. So first step when you're shopping, it's making a choice on compression. This is vital. Do this first or you'll regret it later. Perhaps we can do an in-depth compression analysis in the future, but today we'll focus on the main three, SCS, HIC, and IHC. Let's use the standard compression system as our lead comparison. They commonly weigh between eight to 10 ounces, and for my local viewers, that's around 220 to 290 grams. With the added height of the clamp and the extra bolts that come along with it, these clamps often weigh in at two times heavier than other alternatives. And you might think, well, I'll just take a bolt off. This three bolt from Apex is an SCS, but still weighs 8.7 ounces. The Tilt Arc weighs about 8.5 ounces. But the original SCS, the staggering Proto Full Knuckle, weighs a whopping 12.7 ounces. But remember, that's only as much as a soda can, so it's not that dramatic. They do have refinements like the Baby SCS, which I find out of this world. The technology is even patented in the United States by Andrew Broussard, the creator of the technology. The tech has proven to be so reliable that companies across the world have all adapted and turned it into many different shapes and styles. Nothing, however, will beat the number one classic, the Proto Full Knuckle SCS. This is the Chima Cardines signature model, which was actually followed with three different signature wheels. One of the only riders in the industry to have so many. There's also a V2 that comes in red. It has a very elegant laser edge graphic on all sides, excluding the back where the knuckles are shown. They fit standard and oversized bars, of course, and when purchased, come with that added benefit of contributing to a pro rider's pocket. But of course, with such great tech and such great products, the copycats were bound to come running. And so they did. But what actually happens when two different companies release the same exact thing? There's not a single public record on anyone being pursued in any sort of regards to SCS compression. But the companies that do choose to copy those pre-release models from other brands and re-release them as their own, they look pretty stupid and it's pretty obvious when you see them. Hey guys! Hey yo!
no. The internet described this to me as white labeling. It's when a factory produces a product and then another producer wants to make that same product. But they say it's not for sale. And they say, well, that's what you think. And they go off running uh, to copy and paste land overseas, which is a very interesting world. The general consensus in American culture in particular is that making things in-house with your own product locally sourced is super important and much more valuable because you have control over the quality of said product and the materials that was made to build it. Having things made overseas, you don't have nearly as much control over this. But the possibilities of creation are practically endless and there is absolutely no limit on who can make how much of what. The forever blossoming enterprise of B2B or business to business networks like Alibaba, DHgate, JD.com, Trade India, which looks a lot like no leaming or the warehouse. Where everyone gets all bargain. Some people's motivation to use a B2B network can be a little shady. Because of the massive amount of orders that come in daily from thousands of vendors in hundreds of different countries, there's a little bit of a gray area, which leads to a lot of copyright issues. And that's serious. You don't want to mess about with copyright. It's possible that Blazor Pro had no idea that the clamp already existed because OEMs offer you a wide variety of options right out the gate. It was the, you know, the first ever SCS clamp. They probably knew. A business to business network like Alibaba consists of a wide variety of OEM options. OEM stands for Original Equipment Manufacture. Bruh. Companies can hire these OEMs and create original equipment for their business to then sell onwards. It's called a business to business network, but virtually anyone can create an Alibaba account and start producing products. But this process isn't for everybody. There are many steps involved with this. From choosing your network to finding a manufacturer, developing your product line, getting samples, testing those samples, revision production, and paying for it all. You can pay for it in many different ways too. B2B networks can be a very strange place where gimmicks, copycats, and flat out scammers are found. Some companies have completely backtracked their releases because of the problem. They put in all this work to get the product nailed and then mass production, it's completely different. But if you put in the work, Alibaba is a fantastic tool. <laughs> and they have a super fun CEO. I'm gonna tell the story about Jack Ma and I think you're gonna like this. Speaking of like, hit that like button. Nice. In his early business years, he was labeled a failure. Might be why he now rocks this Dr. Evil themed collared shirt. Or perhaps he sports it to spite KFC officials who rejected him during a desperate time of his job search. Of the 24 people that applied for a job, 23 were given one and Jack Ma was not. The chicken joint would soon be kicking themselves, discovering Jack Ma had gone on to create Alibaba and become one of the richest men on earth, worth an astounding $23.8 billion. Shut us a popcorn chicken, cuz. From mid 30s failure and one bright idea later, he became one of the richest men in the entire world. And by the looks of things, he's pretty stoked about it. I bet he'd be even more stoked if you hit subscribe. And no matter which side you stand on, either way, it still takes a whole lot of hard work and dedication to make a successful product. And that's the takeaway. As a courtesy and sign of respect, we're obviously gonna put the proto clamp at number one. Just look at the abundance of colors. These are the hallmark of scooter clamps. The successful baby SCS range was followed up by the Sentinel SCS. Proto describes the Sentinel SCS as the most technically advanced standard compression system ever created. To top it off, despite being half an inch taller, increased weight was not an issue with its tapered top and the two cutouts that removed unnecessary material and weight. There's also a brand new feature called the spreader bolt, which is a clever adaptation to the penny trick, which is sometimes necessary to fit your handlebars. An amazing clamp with very elegant features, but some people just don't like it. They prefer the classic. It's hard to say I disagree. Next, we're gonna talk about Native. Now, Native is another rider owned brand that has a fantastic selection of double clamps coming in an abundance of colors. My personal favorite is the Cove colorway, which is this dark ocean blue. There are plenty of different colorways to choose from, black, silver, a combination of black and silver, 
red, pink, green. They actually call this leaf. They fit standard and oversized bars, of course, so IHC and HIC compression, thicker bolt housing, a sleek front face, tough six millimeter bolts, and a very durable pastel paint finish. Native is one of those brands that's always ticking the boxes. Their colorways flourish throughout the range that they provide, always come in with very high quality finishes. Their doubles and quads are very trustworthy. Even their lower tier range, the STEM SCS, a very affordable, high quality SCS clamp. They only fit the standard bars though, which is a bit of a downside, but they still have a really nicely ribbed spine. They have a super minimalistic logo. I guess you could say they're not as pretty as what's to come. Native continues to check boxes by including this STEM SCS on the STEM Complete. That's before we jump into the aftermarket range, where we then find the Orca SCS. Now this is a serious piece of kit. Jaluka brown, leaf green, pastel pink, cove blue, marble white, black and raw, matte black, and rufous red. These colorways all stand out all too well, but my personal favorite, of course, is just the black. This SES to me is like a perfect culmination between all the other SESs combined into one perfect clamp, but I'm probably a little biased since I do ride this clamp myself. Native just low-key slaps. Maybe if you get one, you'll be able to do stuff like this. Hmm, probably not though. At number three, we've got three clamps from Ethic that are very funky. First up is the mono clamp. This is a single bolt holding your life together. Now you could double up on these, triple up on them. I highly recommend it, but there's also the double in the scythe version. Sylph, scythe, sylph, doesn't matter. Standard colors, neochrome, black, red, and blue. Then we've got this steel version that's even thinner. I don't know if I trust that. I think I'd go with the scythe. Silth, sorry, I don't know. Aesthetically, this is a beautiful clamp. You can't deny it. Much better than the basic series. Although this is a lot cheaper. The Valkyries are really nice too, and these are super affordable too at $29. They fit standard and oversized, have a very lightweight profile, minimalistic look, and six mil head bolts with easy outs. And right here is an Ethic SCS in black gunmetal and silver, but... Unfortunately, no matter how much you wish this existed, it is indeed fake. Same thing goes with the plexiglass concept. You wish this was real, but it's fake. Well, I mean, it's not fake entirely. The designer actually makes real parts. A lot of the artwork is just for fun and to promote those actually existing parts. I really like his style of artwork. He's got a Star Wars series, which you can see a bunch of stormtroopers lined up and being led by evil superior stormtroopers. Let's play a little game of real or fake. Brought to you by the amazing artwork of Jeremy G Designs. Does this clamp exist? Yes, it does. This is sold in Russia by a company called Comet. How about this one? Sold in Asia. It's called the Squid Clamp. It took the entire scene by storm, banking off the popularity of the Squid Game Netflix series. Mm, yeah, this ain't fooling anyone. It's fake. This next one is not a clamp, but I needed an excuse to show you it anyway. This is a native 30 wide wheel. And yeah, you guessed it's fake but it is super cool. And what's also super cool is this Addict SCS, which you can actually buy and is totally real, thank goodness. And thank goodness for designers like these. Another page, Rider Design, is a developer of very high-end custom scooter parts. This is a reinvention of the Reventon Phoenix deck. Considering this is what it used to look like, he has made a significant improvement. Now these parts you unfortunately cannot buy but there's a huge plus to having pages like this out there. This is a place where we can show demand for what designs we really respond to. Brands are always paying attention to pages like this and are all collectively helping the scene push the aesthetic of parts to all new levels. Next up, the beloved selection of tilt clamps. 
Starting off with the two bolt that comes in a selection of colors, but I wish came in green. Very nice clamp, very strong, very elegant, very pretty. If we tip it over like this and look at the features, we've got laser etched logos, very elegant, modern style, like I mentioned, and tough six millimeter head bolts. There are three types of tilt double clamps, the classic, the arc, and the sculpted, which is the rarest of all three. These are so hard to find, they are usually out of stock and come in a fantastic selection of colors, some of the best of which are the gold, the purple, and the blue. The clamp also features tough six millimeter bolts, embossed logo this time, but the drawback being that they only fit standard bars. If you want a future-proof compatibility, maybe instead pick up the classic. It's probably a little bit cheaper and comes with mostly the same features. A slightly flat face profile, six mil bolts are standard, and like I said, fits all sorts of bars. Moving on to the SCS, this is the ARC version. Beautiful anodizing finish, and the black is super duper clean. Really, really nice profile and a great presentation from this brand, a writer-owned brand that really knows what they're doing. They also have signature models belonging to Isaac Miller and these limited edition models that are wrapped in camo. Laser etched graphic, super rare this one as well. Tilt really pushes the boundary of resale value with products like these. They're so special that the brand creates FOMO around not having this product, and as a result, they completely sell out. But even while they make refinements, they still obviously provide the classic goods. This would be the top selling, or at least one of the top selling SCS clamps of all time. The classic goes hard. The Select series was introduced as a more affordable option in comparison to something like the Rigid. The Rigid had a lot of unique architecture to it, but wasn't so hot because of the fact that it was super tall. It did sport a built-in dust cover though, but like I said, stupid tall. Just like Native, they've actually introduced the more affordable SCS on their stock standard complete, making this scooter a compilation of aftermarket parts. In at number five is the Apex range. We'll start things off with the Gamma 3-bolt SCS. This was quite an innovation when it dropped on the scene with only three bolts in the entire stack, but still not compromising weight for strength. Next is the V3, which has been around for 10 years or so, just like the Gamma, but the newest and most refined is the SCS Lite. I really like this clamp. It looks just like the double, only twice as tall. Or if you dare, it's four times as tall as the Mono Lite. The mono standard might help you sleep better at night though. When we compare the two, you can see just how much metal is milled out of that little mono light. The standard version is thicker and stronger and also utilizes a six millimeter head bolt rather than the five. If it was me though, I'd save myself all the trouble and just go up to a double clamp, either the light or the standard. If you're into SES, go with the gamma, I would say. The V3 is really great, but the V3 is somewhat outdated and a lot of other brands actually sported this same look way back in the early 2010s. And while the light version is more refined and looks more original and modern, I do prefer the Gamma still. I must admit, Apex products are quite expensive, but the shopping experience you get along with that is pretty good. Next on the list, the best number, number six, it's the North series, or the North brand rather. Starting off with the latest and greatest, the Hammer V2 SCS. This one has a tapered top and a stretch bolt, just like the Sentinel, taking after the greats. They refined the first version quite substantially with those new features I mentioned, but also with far better paint finishing. You can see on the first version right here, the color of the peach is not nearly as vibrant as those new ones. Moving on to the profile double clamp, which comes in many more colors, including this fantastic bright banana yellow. These clamps feature a nicely concave shape and thick knuckles to safely house those six mil head bolts. My second favorite color would have to be the baby blue. We really need to give props where props is due. This series is quite groundbreaking and the forks that are coming out of North right now are quite innovative. Really enjoying this brand right now.
These picks aren't particularly organized, so don't be discouraged when I put Drone at number 7. This is another very, very good brand. This Hive clamp, however, has been discontinued, and a lot of their other clamps, like the Hive SCS, also discontinued. The Contour clamp, really nice in SCS too, and discontinued as well. Very sad. But the Luna clamp is still around. You can still get these. This is a HIC clamp. Let's hope that they don't too get discontinued. The Enigma SCS2 is a fantastic refined version of the original Enigma SCS, which was <laughs> discontinued. The clamp features a very elegant convex face, updated sculpting, and of course the 6mm heads on both that and the Contour 2, which my favorite color is red. A very sporty clamp which comes with a sleek profile and has that shaved top half like the Enigma. I'm really hoping that they sell a lot of these so that they don't too get discontinued. At number eight, a turbulent company, but still a very nice one. Urban Art has had a very rocky road from the Primo all the way through the Evo V2 and upwards through the series to the Butter Range. They've also made about five different renditions of their SCS compression, starting way back with a three bolt. Nowadays, this is the clamp we're dealing with and the blue one is actually super rare compared to the rest. If you can get your hands on one of these, resale value will be poppin'. While Urban Art is still trying to find its feet after changing in ownership, they're still putting out pretty decent looking bits. Next up, and of course we are creeping towards the end, the Striker Gravis is a little bit boring in comparison to the three bolt that's currently available from Striker. They used to have a wide range of quad clamp SCSs, which came in literally the coolest colors I've ever seen. They were sadly discontinued, but this Ben J France signature SCS is super elegant and the BG Sig Sig clamp is also available in a two bolt. This is the standard two bolt from Striker and they just so happened to have recently released a brand new vibrant set. A newer brand on the scene, it's Oath Components. Don't be misled by these ones that are described to be titanium, that's just the colorway. These clamps, as you can see, are very lightweight, and it is a repeating theme throughout all of the Oath Components series. From this one, which is known as the Carcass V1 clamp, right here we've got the Cage V2 double. These ones take the two-tone color to a whole new level, completely mixing and matching different colors that are very conflicting, but they actually work together, interestingly enough. Now, I need you guys to settle this one in the comments. Which one looks better? The Cage V2 or the Carcass V2? I'm gonna cast my vote in for the Carcass V2 because it is so sleek. It actually highly resembles the Urban Art Clamp that we saw earlier, and there's good reason for that. I mentioned that company ownership had changed. These guys actually picked them up. So guys, we've had a lot of fun looking through all of these scooter clamps. I hope you learnt a thing or two about them. And I'm going to leave you with a special compilation of really funny clamps and just random bits and bobs that I found on the way through that I thought you would enjoy. Bye.